So we talk a decent amount about autism and overstimulation, and that's a totally valid topic that honestly, I should probably make a video on here soon. But today I wanna to talk about something a little different. Today I wanna to talk about ADHD and understimulation. One of the things about being both autistic and ADHD like me is that you tend to have a very narrow window of proper stimulation. Too much and you end up overstimulated and everything is terrible, but too little and you end up being understimulated and everything is terrible. So today I just wanted to talk about what understimulation is, what it feels like, and what you can do about it. Hi, my name is Megan and welcome to Neurodivergent Magic, the YouTube channel for accessible and relatable neurodivergent content. So what is understimulation? Understimulation is when your nervous system is not receiving enough input. Now, if you're autistic like me, that might sound insane. It's like, no, 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 we always want less input. We're always overstimulated. Please, less input would be great. But if you're ADHD, also like me, you are probably intimately familiar with understimulation. It feels like pacing around your house looking for something to do, but nothing feels right. It looks like opening cupboards and eating random things, hoping that something will hit the spot and make you feel better, but it usually doesn't. It feels like pinching your legs during a three hour class because you are so bored and boredom is so painful to you that you would rather be in real physical pain than experience the boredom pain. These are all very real examples from my very real life. And <laughs> understimulation is something that I didn't realize I dealt with, I guess, for a long time. I, I didn't understand what it was. I just knew that I often felt like something was wrong and I couldn't pinpoint what it was. And then I got diagnosed as ADHD and I was like, oh, I need more stimulation. I need more input in my nervous system to make me feel safe. This is actually one of the reasons that stimulant medication works so well for dealing with ADHD is because the stimulant medication stimulates the nervous system so you don't feel so understimulated anymore. I'm actually really looking forward to meeting with my psychiatrist at the end of the month here and maybe trying out stimulant medication and seeing if that helps me with my understimulation issues. So if you would be interested in seeing a video about me trying medication, uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know if that would be of interest to you. So how do we cope with understimulation besides stimulant medication? Because that's not an option for everybody, or it might just be something you're unwilling to try, and that's completely fine. This is a very medication neutral space, meaning that if meds work for you, awesome. I'm personally on medication for my depression and for autistic agitation, and it works really well for me. Um, but I also know that there's plenty of reasons to not take medication, and that's also completely fine. One great way to fight understimulation is through fidgets. Personally, I usually fidget with a crystal. This is some green calcite. Uh, crystals are one of my hyperfixations. Uh, <laughs> and I just, it's its smooth, but it's also jagged. It's, it's the perfect stim for me. So uh, stimming and fidgeting is a great way to sort of tell your brain, hey, here's something for you to focus on besides how unbelievably bored you are. Another tip is to just give your brain a stimulating task to do. Let's say you're waiting in line, which is one of the worst things to do as an adhd -er, is standing in a line with nothing to do, especially let's say like your phone is off or you forgot it in the car. Like, what are you supposed to do? Um, something that I started doing in grad school when I was in my three hour classes and I could not pay attention to save my life is I would count backwards from a thousand by sevens, which is something I got from Parks and Rec. Uh, it's what Ron tells Leslie to do when she's angry. She counts backwards from a thousand by sevens and thinks of warm brownies. And that was something I did when I was feeling really understimulated and I needed something that would occupy a little bit of brain space. Finally, if you're trying to do a really boring task like folding laundry or something, I always recommend turning on a podcast, turning on something stimulating. And this can be a challenge when you're both autistic and ADHD, or at least I have found it to be a challenge because sometimes I, I'm understimulated because I need something, but I'm also very, very easily overstimulated. So it has to be the perfect thing. So like a podcast that's too educational, that requires too much thought is, is going to over 
overstimulate me and it's going to be too much. But a podcast that's too boring is just going to add to the noise without actually stimulating my brain and then I'm going to get overstimulated as well. So this can be tricky. Sometimes it requires a little bit of time of sifting through the podcast and seeing what feels right. And I just recommend that you give yourself that time. I often beat myself up because it's like, oh my gosh, just turn on a podcast and fold the laundry. Like, just get it done. It doesn't matter. Like, geez. But it does matter. Trying to find the proper window of stimulation is important. I deserve to feel safe in my body. And if that takes a couple of minutes, it will be okay. I hope this video better helped you understand what understimulation is and how you can deal with it. As always, thank you so much for listening and I will see you next Tuesday.